Today, I'm so excited. I am going to be discussing the new innovation that's happening in the Detroit metro area. Many of you know it. I'm from the Detroit area, and I'm so excited to highlight the female founders that are changing the landscape. Many people know that Detroit is all, all about the auto industry, but what else does Detroit have? My guest is so innovative. I got to have time with her when I was in the Detroit area. Her name is Amanda Sweet, and she started a company called Revamp. Amanda, I'm excited to dive into this. Yay, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for inviting me, for coming back to Detroit and highlighting amazing women. Like we talked about, and we could talk about more today, there are so many amazing women and businesses coming out of Detroit every single day. So the boom is real. The explosion of entrepreneurship is real here. Yeah. And what do you think is leading that innovation? Because, you know, when you look in Silicon Valley, obviously it's a tech hub. And when people think of Detroit, they think of the auto industry. But where do you see Detroit headed in the future over the next five to 10 years? Interesting. Okay. So for those of you that don't know me again, my name is Amanda Sweet. I'm the founder of the revamp. We do a quarterly clothing swap festival and in the community, I'm known as the creative fairy godmother. So I find myself in the nonprofit space, community service space, the fashion space and the creative media spaces. Um, and I am very passionate about Detroit. I've been bo I'm born and raised in Michigan. Um, and I really found my creative way in the city of Detroit and if you ask me, I think that the boom is in media. But if you ask any Detroiter, Detroit's been here. We've been here. We've been doing things since day one. We're the Motor City. We're, we're Motown. So there is a innovation that's built into our blood. There's entertainment and media and community that's just built in. Um, but what I'm seeing, I have a very interesting perspective as well. I run a co-working space here in the Metro Detroit area called Bamboo, and we're surrounded by entrepreneurs. We're seeing a lot of tech come out of the Michigan area. There is one particular group called Black Tech Saturdays. They're kind of leading this beautiful black and brown led tech charge when it comes to apps new like programs, services, offerings. Um, but where do I see Detroit in the next five to 10 years? I see Detroit being the next like destination place to live for young entrepreneurs in any industry. I mean, there's a lot of automotive companies like Ford and GM that are putting their money into groups like Black Tech Saturdays, like Bamboo, things like that, to mm -hmm. then invest into more entrepreneurship, but I think mm -hmm. it's media. I think it's film. I think it's music. I think it's fashion. I think it's all of those things. So mm -hmm. we're just, we're doing it here. I think just the rest of the world is now seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. Did you know that my, now my uncle told me that he was um, back in the day, he used to work for 20th Century Fox. Um, you know, he was in the military. And so he had a contract with 20th Century Fox. And he told me way back in the day that the Midwestern accent is the most sought out accent out of all accents in the U in the US. I didn't know that. It's a fun fact. I, I, I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. Uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I was also crowned the first ever Miss Voluptuous America. And I didn't I got know that. It was, it's very cool to represent plus size women all over the globe. And when I went to the UK, they were like, can you talk for us? And I'm like, just like in my normal speaking voice, they're like, your, your voice, your accent is so beautiful. And I was like, my accent <laughs> with their beautiful British accents. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned media as yeah something that is starting to innovate in the Detroit area. And I would 100% agree with you on that. I think that, um, you know, Motown is from there and we have some of the biggest um, media outlets. Uh, you know, the Detroit News, it's still a powerhouse when it comes to news information. Um, Eminem is from there. I think that um, there's a lot of uh, media outlets. I mean, you have Our Detroit Magazine, which is a, a really great magazine that really talks about some of the um, businesses that are happening in the Detroit area. But I want to get into how your company evolved and what your company is really all about. Let's talk about that. 
that. So I touch on the fashion because I love clothing. I love dressing and I get a lot of inspiration through thrifting. So I do a lot of thrifting and the style that you can find in Detroit thrift stores is just amazing, especially from our our ancestors, the women before us, especially for plus size women. So there was a stint in my life where I moved to Texas for a couple of years and found that the thrift stores were there were not great for the plus size figure. And I was working for a publication here in Detroit and I was coming home every couple of months. So I'd come home, I'd thrift my face off and mail myself a bunch of clothing home. And then next thing I knew, like all, every single closet, every corner of my house was overflowing with cool clothes and I just wow. couldn't wear them all. So I've, I've swapped with friends in the past, but, uh, I didn't know anyone in Texas. So I threw a clothing swap in the backyard of a salon and five people showed up. But one of those persons was like, do it again, do it again. And I'll help you with social media. And then 10 people showed up and then 20 people showed up. And our last clothing swap, we had over 500 people and we've donated over 18,000 pounds of clothing back to nonprofits right here in Detroit. Um, it's growing a lot. Thrifting is very popular. Circular economy is becoming a very big part of the conversation. Um, so we're creating an avenue for people to express their fashion, experience volunteerism from a different perspective, um, participate in circular economy. And we're in this like grassroots phase, but I think this year we're like jumping into this, okay, we're, we're business now yeah. and to find ways to stay sustainable, like both financially and just energetically, but it's been that's really important. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really important to stay energetic about your business. You know, it's always easy at the beginning, right? But when you're in the grind of things, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's hard, but you know, I think surrounding yourselves with like-minded entrepreneur is key. And that is such an important aspect to fostering growth in a company where you really get inspired and connect with other founders. And I think that that is so important to growing and scaling a company. Now, when I met with you about, a, I think it was almost about two months ago, you know, you talked about, you created this amazing festival. Talk about this. Yeah. So the revamp is a one day festival. We host it every single quarter. And imagine 500 of your friends are all clearing out their closets and our volunteers turn it into a retail experience. And there's music and alteration stations and nonprofits visible. And then at the end, we donate all of the leftover clothing to nonprofits. The coolest thing to me about the Clothing Swap Festival that we host is that we're giving our volunteers, we have a brand ambassador program and a volunteer program. There are a lot of young people, a lot of young women, and we're giving them this safety net of an experience like a festival to express their creative side and maybe explore their entrepreneurial side mm -hmm. um, by trying stuff out in an experimental space that won't let them fail. And so mm -hmm. I really believe in what you said about surrounding yourself with other entrepreneurs or creatives. I feel like I didn't take my business to the next level till I started working in a co-working space. It was every other person has a business and everybody's talking about it, how, how they're showing up for themselves, how they're planning for the next quarter, how they're doing things strategically. And before I'm just like, oh, I'm just sending an email, making a Facebook event page, like, okay, this is cool. Oh, now people are showing up. And now that I'm planted here, I'm hearing words like, you know, strategy and innovation and budgeting. And like, so now I'm signing up for classes and doing mm -hmm. business courses and not just like flying by the seat of my pants which is mm -hmm. really my style, but I'm growing yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that there's so much knowledge that needs to evolve, especially for female entrepreneurs, right? I think that what I saw, especially in growing a company, that sometimes we feel like we're on this lonely desert island all alone, right? And the lack of information, support, that other women are doing it. And I think it, it starts to inspire, you know, the mind to, to really think differently. How do you see that happening in the Detroit area? Oh my gosh. There's so, so many groups, so many courses, so many classes. I recently did um, the retail boot camp at Tech Town, which is another like entrepreneurial 
hub for education founded or funded by Wayne County, which is in Detroit uh, or which Detroit is in. Um, and they were like, this is our first class with only one guy. Everybody wow. else is women. Um, wow. I took another business class. It was the first iteration of it at the Dejara Innovation Hub in Dearborn. All women except for two guys. And the more classes that I take and the more spaces that I'm in, I do a lot of speaking and I'm seeing and moderating. And they're always talking about like women and emerging leaders. But I'm like, every business room I'm in is filled with women. Every yeah. single room. Even if it's not women focused. I'm like, they, the women are looking at their career opportunities, finding that they're not accessible within the jobs that they're in. And they're taking the reins and saying, you know what? I could do this better for myself. And they're starting the businesses. There's a lot more, there's a lot of support as well. Like I'm thinking of like Great Lakes Women's Business Council, which was voted the second best women's council in the country like this year. Um, other groups like that, like WeBank and um, Femology, there's groups that are supporting women specifically, mm -hmm. but I think women are showing up for themselves and mm -hmm. demand space at the table, whether these rooms want it or not. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's tired of the way the work is, uh, working environments are, the, the pay scale, and we're finding that we can make more money on our own, being mm -hmm. the master at our craft, whether we're in a company or in a startup. Um, mm -hmm. So I think Detroit is creating spaces for that, but I think women in general, but I'll just speak for women in Detroit or women in Michigan, we're demanding spaces. We're not at, we're not waiting, we're not asking, we're showing up and we're letting people know like we're here and we're doing business and we're doing it really, really well. Yeah, that I mean, that's what I really love. It's kind of like that old, you know, saying that uh, if you don't find a seat at the table, you have to create your own table, right? And And I think that, Detroit really resonates with that grittiness that it takes to be an entrepreneur. And that's what I see um, is happening, especially every time I come back to the you know Detroit area. I'm always so proud of that underrated city. I think there's been a lot of uh, money being pumped into the Detroit area with you know the Illich family, you know um, Dan Gilbert and Rocket Mortgage and all of the things that he did to decide to put his headquarters downtown, and um, mm -hmm. the Ford family who obviously turned uh, the uh, uh, what was it, the Grand Central Station around? I mean, which is oh, amazing, gosh. right? Beautiful. And, you know, you obviously see people like Eminem, who is, you know, all about Detroit, which is mm -hmm. amazing. You see uh, the Detroit Lions finally being talked about as something yes. good other than something bad. And in the Detroit area, it's really all about the spirit of Detroit, right? We have that statue, the spirit of Detroit down there. And that's what the spirit of, I think an entrepreneur is really about. So yeah. where do you see your company, you know, over the next three to five years? Like, how do you see it innovating and where do you think that it's headed? Oh, yeah. Well, I feel very blessed to be surrounded by a lot of movers and shakers within this entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so I'm finally at a place in my business where I can step out of the business. I have people working in the business and I could start to innovate and strategize a little bit more. Um, the dream is bigger, 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 taking over in a great way. We're, we're pitching to a couple of museums right now that are scouting us to host our festivals with them, um, which we have our big, our fingers crossed for. We have our eyeballs on Heart Plaza, which is like the big festival area in Detroit. Um, but outside of the festival itself, we are playing with the idea of building a global app um, for clothing sharing and swapping. And we're also talking about how to turn, this is my, this is my entrepreneurial brain going. I'm seeing all of the clothing products that come in and go out, but there's a group of clothing products that don't get to be donated. They're getting tossed in the trash. They're, they're waste. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're asking questions like, can we turn clothing waste into buildable products? Can it be melted down and turned into like printing filament. So we're at the very beginning of asking questions like that, but I have enough headspace to ask questions like that. Like what is the global, they say all the time, what is the global problem that you're solving? And so I know what the local and the global problem is when it comes to swapping the clothes, but mm -hmm. I'm 
what's the next level up? Like, okay, we're swapping. We got that down. We figured it out. But yeah. what's the next thing? Can we turn clothing waste into a product? I know a lot of people are playing with that right now and they're talking about it. And I do realize that there's a lot of industry that will take clothing waste and send it overseas for it to be developed into a product. But I want to know like on a local level, on a Detroit level, based on the machining and the product and the industry that we have here, is there something that we can do? Um, so those are the questions that I'm playing with. And yeah, where do I see it going? I just see it growing and evolving millions of times like anybody else's business and not being the same. That's what I see. It's Yeah. I mean, it's like that old adage where, you know, you either innovate or you die. Right. And that's so yeah. true in business. And, and, and I think that it's important, you know, I think that um, clothing and how to innovate through clothing. I mean, many people don't know, but the Detroit area came from some of the best retailers in the world at the time. You know, oh, yeah. many people don't know that Kmart was from the Detroit area or Hudson. Uh, for those of you who do know Hudson, they were they were sold out uh, to Macy's yeah. at one point. But we had uh, some of the, um, I think, global international retailers that really started from Michigan and, and Michigan I, I see is, is still a retail hub. You know, people still like to go out there and shop. And, um, you know, a lot of times I, you know, people would always say to me, you know, retail is dead. Retail is not dead. It's different, right? It's it different. is different. And people still want to go out there and have experiences like Lakeside Mall. They, they yeah. completely demolished that and they're changing uh, the, the entire project to where it's, you know, families can come there and really make it an experience. And and I, that's what I see about Detroit and, and the business landscape of what's happening there. So how can some of our listeners get a hold of you if they'd like to, you know, check you out, learn about what your business is all about, get involved, especially if they're in the Detroit area? Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Rose. This was so much fun. I am sure I could talk to you all day long about business and entrepreneurship and Detroit alone. Like I heard a factoid that like we're one of the largest retailers and producers of furs. Furs oh. for coats. Fur. Well, Dietrich yeah. Fur. Did you ever see any of their old commercials? I probably have. <laughs> I'm a jing I like I'll remember a jingle for the rest of my life. Dietrich like Fur. <laughs> <laughs> They had that I'm going to look it up right after this. I you got to look it up. You're going to laugh. You're going to laugh. <laughs> I love it. But yes. So thank you again. Um, yes. If any of you are interested, I have my own YouTube show called the Let's Glow Show. I do something very similar where I interview a creative entrepreneur every single week and we talk about their journeys. Um, so on YouTube, it's Amanda Sweet Live. And then I'm also most heavily on Instagram, which is also Amanda Sweet Live. Um, if you're interested in the revamp and all of the things we do, you can find us on on the web at the revamp.co or on Instagram at revamp Detroit. We're always looking for volunteers, beneficiaries, sponsors, and just guests to participate. So hit me up. And if, if none of those are tickle your fancy, but you're interested in co-working, I know the way too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate this, Amanda. And, you know, thank you for tuning in today. My name is Rose Vitale. I'm the founder of the Female Founders Institute, where we help grow and scale women organizations. So if you'd like to get involved, please visit our website at femalefoundersinstitute.org. Cheers.